Good afternoon and welcome to Just News on Wednesday, the 2nd of May. I'm Ian Chambers. And I'm Jing Lee. The headlines. With local elections imminent, we found out why Broom Hill is a key battleground. Squatters in Sheffield are reacting to a new law that will lock them out for good. And how did volunteers transform this local playground? Voters across Sheffield will head to the polls tomorrow in this year's local elections. Dave Rhodes has been spending time this week in one of the city's most closely fought wards. Welcome to Broom Hill, set to be one of the most hotly contested wards in this week's local elections. The area is heavily populated with students who rent most of the area's accommodation, whilst the Western Park Hospital is one of the ward's biggest sources of local employment. Lib Dem councillor and former city council leader Paul Scriven is standing for re-election. Last time in 2008, Mr Scriven won a sizeable majority. With the Lib Dems doing badly in the national polls and Labour doing well, have they now got their sights firmly set on unseating the former council leader? Well, I'm not really thinking about Paul Scriven. I'm just trying to do really well for Labour. I think it will just show that they want ordinary people back in politics. You know, I've had a very positive campaign focused on my strengths. The Green Party candidate Bernard Little is looking to capitalise on the student vote, which traditionally goes to the Liberal Democrats. It's a close race really between me and Labour because what we're seeing is that the Lib Dem vote is collapsing, probably on the result of what's happening nationally. So we, have, we are in a, with a very good chance and I hope to join the other two Greens on Sheffield Council. Paul Scriven was unavailable to talk to us but his spokesperson says the Lib Dems are confident of doing well. I'm quite confident that we've, you know, we've worked hard for this area for the last eight years that we've been, I've been a councillor. Paul Scriven has been a councillor for 11 years. We're trying to fight it on local issues. Our opponents are trying to just talk about the national issues. Let's see what cuts through local or national. This election is certainly a three-horse race, but could the results have a wider implication as well? And could Broomhill also be a bellwether for the rest of the local elections in the UK? If the Liberal Democrats do well here, does that mean they're going to buck the national trend? If Labour don't get in, what will that mean for Ed Miliband? And what happens if the Green Party win here as well? Well, that could be a rejection of national politics in its entirety. This is Dave Rhodes for Just News in Sheffield. And here's a full list of candidates in the Broomhill ward. Meanwhile, the people of Sheffield will also be voting in the mayoral referendum tomorrow. This vote will decide whether Sheffield will adopt the elected mayor system like Doncaster did 10 years ago. Joe Allen went to Sheffield city centre to find out just how much people know about tomorrow's vote. Did you know there's a mayoral referendum taking place on Thursday? No. So you're not going to vote? Possibly not, no. I might do. Depends if we've got time. Will you be voting? No. Okay, so you got no interest in it? Not whatsoever. No, I didn't. You didn't? So you're no. not planning to vote? No. So it seems most people in Sheffield don't know there's a referendum taking place on Thursday. Or if they do, they're not quite sure what it entails. However, it will be an important decision in the future of local government in Sheffield. On Monday night, Sheffield Hallam University and the Star held a discussion on the mayoral referendum, where members of the public were given a chance to ask questions of local MPs. Sheffield is one of 12 UK cities to have a referendum over elected mayors. The two choices are whether Sheffield will be run by an elected mayor or whether the city will carry on with the current system, where a local councillor is chosen as council leader. If the people of Sheffield vote yes to an elected mayor, the election would then be held in November. The mayor would serve a maximum term of four years before standing for re-election, and this whole system allows the public to have a more direct say in who runs their city. An elected mayor is not to be confused with the ceremonial Lord Mayor though, and the position of Lord Mayor would still exist. But Bryony Robinson from the University of Sheffield says that one problem with the system is how an elected mayor could differ from council members politically. Well, I think there's a quite real possibility of having a clash between an elected mayor from one party and a council that's predominantly run by another party. So, for example, in Sheffield, had we elected a Lib Dem mayor at the height of the Lib Dem's popularity, they'd still be serving their four-year term. 
and now be working with a council that's run by the Labour Party. And this election, the Labour are only likely to consolidate their hold of the council further. And that could create real problems um, and problems in making decisions with such strong leadership pulling in two different directions. Many details, such as exactly what powers an elected mayor in Sheffield would have, are still unclear. But by Friday, it will be clear whether the city of Sheffield is taking its first steps into the political unknown. Joe Allen, Just News. For more information on the local elections and an interactive map, you can visit our website. Go to justnews.net. Tributes have continued to flood in for 15-year-old Liam Collier, who was found dead in Barnsley on Monday. The teenager was a pupil at Kirk Bolt Community College and is believed to have hanged himself in a woodland in Elsica. His classmates have promised to make a commemorative bench in his honour and a neighbour told Just News that he was full of life and always smiling. Local MP Michael Dewar released a statement saying, I was shocked and extremely saddened to hear of the death of Liam Collier. My heart goes out to his family and friends. My thoughts and prayers are with them at this most difficult of times. Squatting on private properties is set to become a criminal offence. As Mike McCarthy now reports, Sheffield's homeless community could be seriously affected. That any shelter is a daily issue. By making squatting a criminal offence, the government hopes to reduce trespassing on private property. But opponents of the plan say it won't do much to reduce squatting, but will cause real problems for people looking for shelter in Sheffield. Academics and charities have questioned the wisdom of making the change now and aren't sure what will happen to squatters. They will either be deterred, which is what the government hopes, um, they'll be deterred from squatting, but the question then is where will they go? And again, on our evidence, they will sleep rough, so rough sleeping will go through the roof. Um, with all the consequences for the individuals that suffer that, health and so on. Um, or they will continue to squat because that is their only option other than rough sleeping and they will be criminalised. Here at Sheffield Cathedral, the problem of squatting isn't obvious. But you don't have to look far to find people affected by the new law. Basically it's hard because on a weekend and like, you have a lot of idiots so you've got to get somewhere safe and that way you want to be safe and that. So. The government, they need to get some more hotels off somewhere where people can go who's homeless and to stop the squatting and all that or, and make it illegal. Is the government doing enough? Housing Minister Grant Shep says hostel places are available but the biggest problem is convincing people to use them. As doors close for squatters, it's unclear if enough other options remain open. Mike McCarthy, Just News, Sheffield. The World Snooker Championship at the Crucible has broken its all-time record sales for tickets. Q is your polish. The tournament ends next Monday, but if you don't have a ticket, don't bother trying to get one. You would just have to watch it on TV. All the tickets for the remainder of the World Snooker Championship at the Crucible have sold out. Sheffield has been hosting the event for the last 35 years, but the ticket office at the Crucible has been the busiest ever this year. Before the tournament began, more than 30,000 tickets had already been sold. The World Snooker says a new marketing strategy brought about the increase in sales. We are trying to get more and more clever with our marketing strategies, using social media a lot more, um, you know, building up strong partnerships with local media. We've worked very hard alongside Sheffield City Council and Welcome to Yorkshire to make sure we market the event properly. But what makes people come to Sheffield to watch the World Snooker Championship? It's, it's actually um, a birthday present from my son. My friend's playing here. Hello, who's your friend? Ryan Day. I love snooker. Because we are snooker fans. We enjoyed snooker so much, we've been coming 19 years now. Um, it's a bit more open. The format's changed as well, which makes it like easier to watch almost, and there's good looking players in it this year as well. <laughs> we really enjoy the snooker. We've been coming for the last three years, um, but it was really busy. We couldn't get into the final or the semi-final. They sold all the tickets, so we're here for the quarter-final. Most of the snooker fans will have been disappointed to hear that seven-time world champion Stephen Andre retired from the sport last night at the Crucible. And now for the weather. How is it looking out there, Olivia? Olivia. Good
Thanks, Olivia. Dry. Oh, that's a word I haven't yeah, used to recently. <laughs> it is. Sharnock's residents have pulled together to give their local playground a much needed facelift. Mary Hickey's been down to have a look. Smash glass and empty beer cans. This is what Charnock Recreation Ground used to look like. Back in 2006, the main visitors to this park were antisocial youths. But now it's been completely transformed. Local residents and parents have been working endlessly over the last six years to raise enough money to improve their local community. The newly improved park has plenty to offer families of all ages. From brand new slides and swings to an adventure playground, this park is now a safe haven in the heart of the community. It's cost over £200,000 to give this park a new lease of life. All the money has been raised by a small group of volunteers called Friends of Charnock, who formed together back in 2006 when taking their children to the local park became too unsafe. The two grandchildren were at the school and to see them come out of school and start and enjoy the equipment when there was nothing really at all for them before because it was just like a bomb site basically. Burnt bins, smashed bottles, and odd pieces of packets with cannabis remains in that kind of thing you know it was really really terrible so I thought yes an ideal opportunity to do something and help them so that's why I joined. Friends of Charnock have invested all the money they've raised through fundraising into the park. Donations from local businesses have also contributed to the rejuvenation. This climbing frame is the latest addition to the park. So what's the local reaction? Well, they're buzzing yeah. at the moment, yeah. to be quite honest. Um, to actually and come and see the kids, yeah. Yeah. it's very rewarding yeah. to see the playground used like it is used yeah, now. Definitely. And uh, summer we had uh, a teddy bear's picnic and I walked onto there and I felt so overwhelmed with the amount of people that were sat with the rugs having a picnic. It was just fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's a space where people want to be now, uh, whereas before it wasn't, nobody wanted to come unless it was under due arrest for five minutes with the bored children, whereas now it's everybody wants to come. With plans to raise a further £300,000 for even more improvements, the future looked very bright for this small community. Mary Hickey, Just News, Charnock. Isn't it great what they're doing down there? Yeah, it I is. I absolutely used to love going down to the park when I was a little kid. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> That's all from Just News. See you again tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Magic, you're called in.